the greatest incident I've ever had was the time I was starting in the ministry about five years ago, and I was going up Tracy, Tennessee, just a small town up in the sticks of uh, Tennessee. Uh, it's so small of a town, if you blink your eyes, uh, you'd miss it. And uh, so I was speaking in this little church there. And see, normally during the winter, I have a cold, I have a sore throat, because I'm the only preacher I know of that preaches barefooted. And so I had a sore throat, and I told the preacher, do you have any water here for me to drink? He said, no, they didn't have any drinking facilities. So I walked downtown, and as I walked downtown, I got a 7-Up for my throat because my throat was sore. And I saw the sheriff there in the restaurant, and I said, Sheriff, uh, how about bringing the two strongest men in the county tonight to the church? So no two men have ever held my wrist. One hold my left wrist, another hold my right wrist, without me getting loose in just a second or so. He said, fine. Well, after the preaching service, I walked back downtown because I had a sore throat. And these three guys jumped out of the car. They said, we're ready. I said, ready for what? I said, sheriff said, you can beat up any two or three men in town. <laughs> I didn't say that. Of course, I could. And uh, so I didn't want to provoke a fight. And one man was coming towards me, and I shoved him away. And so I just walked away and walked into the restaurant. And they followed me in the car. And that's, I knew that trouble was coming. And they cornered me in the corner of this restaurant. That's the worst thing that happened to a karateist. It's being cornered. So, as, and I had to think quickly because when you're cornered, you can't move one side or the other. So I asked the tallest man, about six foot two, I said, Come here, I want to talk to you. He said, What do you want to talk about? I said, Just come here. <laughs> and so, as he came to talk to me, I kicked him, just nipped him in the lip. I kicked him in the lip, just barely nipped him. I said, Now, if I'd have gone two inches further, I'd have broken your neck. I looked at all three of them square in the eyes, I had my hands up in one of my karate stances, and I said, now, I don't have anything against you guys. I don't want to fight any of you. But if you come into me, I'll put you in a hospital. And for some reason, <laughs> they became my friends. And uh, uh, the word got around that night, I don't know how, that there's going to be a fight in the church. Now, I've heard about all kinds of church fights, but nothing like this. And then the bootleggers. They're the men in the county who make, you know, the liquor illegally in the stills. They heard that there's a visiting Baptist preacher in town who's going to invite anybody to come up and fight him. And uh, I was in for trouble. And, you know, they said they'd love to get a chance to hit a Baptist preacher. So the, <laughs> the whole right-hand side of the church are filled with these bootleggers and these rough guys in the town and county. And the whole left-hand side are filled with the Christians. You talk about separation. There's separation in that church. And so I thought, what am I going to do? And I've been in all kinds of predicaments. But nothing like this. And I started praying to the Lord. And I said, Lord, help me out. Show me what you want me to do. And just sort of a silent voice spoke to me. He said, just kick him as hard as you can. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, who will be next? This one bootlegger about towards the middle raised his hand. And he just knew he was going to knock me out. And he had so much anticipation. I said, come on up here. So I'm going to stand just right in front of you. And I want you to try to punch me in the face. And okay. He said, fine. And so as he proceeded to punch me in the face, I kicked him in the stomach. And he went, <coughs> and he barely made it back to the pew. And I said, who'll be next? So a man on the right-hand side raised his hand, bootlegger. I said, okay, you get on my right-hand side, and I'll let you punch me to the right side of my face. He said, okay. So as he proceeded to punch me in the right side of the face, I kicked him in the stomach. And he went, <coughs> So, I said, who'll be next? Another young man raised his hand. I said, okay, I'll let you punch me in the face. You try again. So, as he uh, approached the punch me in the face, I blocked his arm. I punched him in the stomach. About knocked him out. He went, <coughs> and so, another man came. I about knocked him out. I said, who'll be next? But nobody raised their hand. And one of the bootleggers started walking out of the service. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm leaving. That's the told you, bootleggers. You can stay and see my karate exhibition, but you're afraid to hear me preach. He said, I'm not afraid. I said, have a seat then. So I had an opportunity to preach some more bootleggers and probably any preacher at one time. I know what you're thinking about. Now, Mike, you're an ordained minister. You're an ordained Baptist minister, but also you're a uh, black belt in karate. But what about that verse in the Bible? says you're supposed to turn your cheek. Now, 
I believe in obeying the Bible. If somebody punched me to the left side of the cheek, I'll turn to the right side. If somebody punched me to the right side, I'll turn to the left side. And I've been looking all through the Bible, try to find out what to do next. And I finally found a scripture verse for my justification. It says here in Ecclesiastes 9:10, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do with all thy might. <clears throat> now, I don't want to be guilty of taking the Bible out of context, you understand. But Jesus said in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, it's more blessed to give than receive. <clears throat> so, uh, I, I think you know what I'd do if somebody attacked me as an ordained Baptist minister. 